I was on Twitter and somebody asked me what's the significance of these signs here so on this lovely sunny evening I have come out to brave the madness of what locals call the Barkisland bump I'm not going to stand here for too long because I am in the middle of a very fast rural B road one which actually featured in the 2014 Tour de France but what you can see in the distance is a section of road that resulted in one of the longest legal cases related to highways maintenance in British history all down to one simple feature that wasn't here at the time in the early 1990s a lady was driving along this stretch of road and as she went over this crest known locally as the Barkisland bump she unfortunately collided with an oncoming vehicle and this gave her life-changing injuries as a result a legal case was brought forward against the local highway authority Calderdale Metropolitan Borough Council after this awful incident it was brought to the council's attention that the road markings had not been fully maintained The marking in question, as you probably gathered by the noise then, was a slow marking to tell you to slow down going over this bump. This had worn off, and the judge held that the council's failure to maintain this road marking made them liable for damages. Obviously, the council felt this was not correct, and they appealed, and it became a bit of a back and forth, and eventually it ended up in the House of Lords, and you may know the case as Goringe against Calderdale Metropolitan Borough Council. And in the end, the judgment came back from the House of Lords that no, it is down to the driver to take the road as they find it. Unfortunately, this one, because of the toing and froing with the legal case, meant that signs and warnings were placed for the hazard, and this is now one of the most oversigned hazards in the United Kingdom, all as a result of one unfortunate tragic mistake. I'm stood on the actual crest here. Now, as a pedestrian, you've got a better visibility than you do driving it. At the time of the incident, the speed limit was 60 miles an hour, national speed limit. In the aftermath, it was reduced to 50, and in the last 10 years, it's been reduced further to 40. Not that it seems to have made much difference to the locals. This is where the problem with the legal case came in, because the plaintiff was actually local. She knew the road, and she drove it arguably recklessly. So it's one really for you to discuss in the comments, I suspect. Do you think that highway authorities have a duty of care to warn of every individual hazard? Or as the case found in the 1990s, the driver should take the road as they find it. Well, I hope that you found the history of this uh, relatively unremarkable road feature that had such a huge impact in road's legal history. Uh, interesting if you did please like and subscribe it would help my channel growth a lot you can follow me on twitter at show me a sign brin uh, links will be in the description see you next time